When I first spotted the listing on Facebook Marketplace, I was sure that it was a scam. Two used animatronics dismantled, bundled together for sale, discounted. The header read, they were a new seller with what looked like a fake account that had been quickly set up. It was actually the picture that tipped me off. They were from Disney Attractions. One appeared to be an angled shot of a robot pirate from the Caribbean ride, and the other was what looked like an older model of one of the presidents from their infamous Liberty Square attraction. I told myself that it was too good to be true, but I went ahead and shot the seller a message anyway to let them know that I was interested in buying. The reply came quickly. Hello, hey, thank you for your interest. These items will be auctioned next Monday at the storage unit. Please submit info for your spot at the event. John. That immediately made me reconsider. I didn't really have time to waste wandering all the way downtown for a chance at purchasing these things. And I knew that an auction like this could probably take hours. Not to mention shipping handling and all the other hidden fees that they could easily attach. I put in my information, but I wasn't expecting much more to come of it. I was just about to close my laptop and consider the whole thing a lost cause when the seller DM'd me again. Hey, sorry about that automated message. It's meant to weed out the wishy-washy wannabes. So, you think you want these hunks of junks? I was relieved to be talking to a real person but still wary, especially the way that they talked. Do they have all the parts, including audio recordings? I typed back. Yep, everything is all here. Just nobody really interested in them. Truth be told, they were going to the auction, but I figured it would be easier to sell them outright, to avoid the hassle of having to haul them back here if they don't. Made sense. I was sure the things probably weighed about a hundred pounds each possibly a little bit more. And since they weren't put together, that just meant extra traps. The auction is Friday. Could I come look at them tomorrow and decide? I asked. That would be perfect. John gave me a few more details, like how to find the storage unit, the passcode to get in, and recommended I bring a small van to haul them in. And then he took the listing off of Facebook, promising that he wouldn't sell them to anyone else. I probably won't be there when you come by to check them out, by the way. Is that okay? I hesitated, thinking maybe this was a scam to try and make me look like I would be trespassing or something. The property has cameras, so I know you won't break anything. I can verify everything financially through PayPal, too, if you make a decision. He added. He drove a hard bargain, so I caved. The storage unit itself was a sore thumb off the main highway, probably owned and operated by a single person by the looks of it. I punched in the code that John had given me and the old rickety gate slowly slid open, whining as it did. Most of the units looked like they were either abandoned or destroyed, further worrying me that maybe what I was going to buy wasn't as spectacular as I had hoped, and this whole afternoon had indeed been a waste. The unit in question was wedged on the second aisle right next to a pothole, with the lock hanging off at halfway. I took a breath and lifted it up, expecting to be disappointed. Much to my surprise though, it looked like the pictures that I had seen online were accurate. Lodged amid the rest of the metallic parts were several different animatronics, all of which looked like they had just been tossed in here without a second thought. I did a quick check of the parts to make sure everything John had told me was there, and then started to pull them out of the unit and onto my flatbed truck. Not exactly rolling in style, but probably headed to better conditions than being trapped in here for the next 20 years, I thought. The pirate was mostly intact, save for the head and one of the arms, which was exactly what John had warned me about. I think the arm rolled down the slope of the unit, so if you dig, you can find it. He had said. Once the bigger parts were on the truck, and I did just that. And that was when I saw that there was actually a third animatronic in the mix that he had even listed at all. This one looked like it was in much better shape. 
It was a big, unpainted, and unused male animatronic, with no clothes on it that looked like it had probably come from either Tomorrowland or the Main Street because it was in such good condition. The minute that I saw its uncolored gray eyes, no hair and weird toothy smile, I knew that it would be perfect for the door greeter of my attraction. I moved the rest of the junk aside and pulled the animatronic out, carefully placing it on the flatbed and using my rope to tie it down, since it was all the one piece and then tried to decide if I even had room for the presidential robot. Somehow, I convinced myself to leave it, figuring that the newer animatronic was a better deal, and since the agreement with John had been for two, I told myself that I wasn't stealing. It all would have to go to the scrap heap eventually, so I was really doing him a favor and he was doing me one too, I decided. Once I was sure the animatronics were snug in the truck bed, I shot John a message. I went ahead and grabbed the bots, sending payment now, I said as I drove out of the storage unit. On the way to the haunted house, he shot me a message back, thanking me for the buy, the usual friendly closure for any seller and I turned my phone over and put it on silent so I wouldn't be distracted while I backed up. My plan was pretty simple. I was going to put the pirate robot in one of the prop walls, so when tourists passed by the head this thing would pop out, say its lines and maybe wave around its hook hand. The colorless one was a different story though. It looked so creepy and so lifelike that I knew it had to be near the front door. Maybe I could get a wig and paint its eyes blue, tell folks that it was my evil twin. I thought to myself as I put the truck in park and began to haul them inside. I laid the pirate parts out on my kitchen table and immediately spotted the audio box, deciding to tinker with it first after I set up the naked bot in the corner. I took a good look at the machine, impressed with how well it was made and noticed a few switches on the back, which I guessed were the motion controls. I flipped them all on and off a few times to see if any worked but no dice. The thing didn't even make a whisper. Then I sat down and started to work with the wires and my phone buzzed. It was John. Hey, did you just decide to get the pirate bot? And you didn't need to pay me for both if you were only getting one. I put the phone back down, realizing that it wouldn't be long before he found out that I had taken the newer model. But did he even know that it was there? Maybe, maybe not. Sorry, I figured since you went through so much trouble, I would just pay it forward. Thanks again, I responded. Back to work. Or so I thought. My phone buzzed yet again seconds later. Did you take anything else from the storage unit? Crap, well, now I have to explain myself. But still, I tried to bluff my way out of it. Is something missing? Sorry, I forgot to lock it back up. I can pay a little extra if something was stolen. Okay, that should keep him off my back for a little bit, I figured. There was a third animatronic. Wasn't meant to be sold. Did you see it? Double crap. I needed to talk my way out of this. Look, I didn't think it was a big deal. That's why I left the other one. Sorry, I think this robot is in better shape. Again, I can pay extra if it's worth more. I looked up at the colorless robot, wondering why it had been in the storage unit at all if it wasn't for sale. A flurry of text popped up from John. No, that one wasn't meant to leave the premises. Where are you now? I'll come pick it up. Did you turn it on? Don't. And one more that was a little worrisome. Not safe. The pirate voice box finally got to working at the same instant, a blood-curdling cackle filling the room and making me jump a little. I looked at the messages again, both confused and creeped out by John. And I hate to say it, but his last text made me decide to put the bot over in my closet, out of the way and not staring at me while I worked. Maybe it was because it was getting late, but after that weird conversation, I didn't like the way that it was looking at me. Once I put it up, I kept my focus on the pirate bot, trying not to let John's bizarre messages freak me out. When my phone buzzed again, this time a call, I was sure it was going to be John announcing that he had somehow found my haunted attraction. Private ID. 
Nervously, I answered and put it on speaker. Hey boss, you okay? What time do I need to get there for set up tomorrow? Pierre, one of the maintenance men. He always called from some landline. I can't tell you how relieved I was to hear from him. Uh, six is fine. Maybe a little bit earlier. I got some new bots that I'll need help with. I told him. Sounds good. See you then. I rubbed my eyes tiredly and yawned as I checked the time. Way past my bedtime. Whatever was going on with the other bot, it would have to wait until morning, I told myself. I stood up and admired the pirate bot, pleased with the progress that I had made on it. But what he really needs to make him complete is a prop sword, I thought to myself. Just one more thing. I walked over to the storage closet and opened it up, rummaging through my equipment and then pausing. Wait, where was the other bot? I took a step back and then saw that it was leaning to one side over in the hallway. That's not where I put it. Is it? I sighed, realizing it was too late for me to remember, and I grabbed the prop sword trying not to let my half-asleep brain get the better of me. I placed the pirate sword in the hand of the bot and took another step back, grabbing my phone off the counter and taking a snapshot of it. As I did... I got a few more worrisome text messages from John. If turned on, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Keep an eye on it until I get there, but not for too long. Shoot me your address in the morning so I can come get it ASAP. Did you leave? Are you safe? And one more that made me feel uneasy standing there. We'll trick you. Don't listen. Now he had officially creeped me out. I decided to block him. I turned back toward the hallway looking at the leaning bot. Just standing there, its colorless eyes looking straight into my soul, and its weird teeth gleaming in the dim lights. Maybe I should just go home, I thought to myself. But then I reconsidered. If this thing was valuable, John might try to break in here and take it from me. I decided to go get my small dolly so I could wheel it to my office and lock it in there. And it's not that I was buying into his creepy messages, but I kept my eye on the robot for as long as I could until I turned a corner and went downstairs. My attraction is a total of three different stories, by the way. The basement being the most popular for obvious reasons, and also the most cluttered. And pushing aside a few of the prop ghosts and ghouls, I found the dolly and started heading for the stairs. I was halfway there when I tripped over something in the floor and I crashed down. Christ on a cracker. I shouted at the top of my lungs as I rubbed my head from where I had bumped against one of my old medieval knights. And then I heard a voice from upstairs. Hey boss, you okay? Pierre, what was he doing here so early? I got up and hauled the dolly upstairs, answering back. Yeah, I just nearly killed myself, but other than that, I'm fine. As I got back to the main floor, I set the dolly aside and looked around. I didn't see Pierre anywhere, and I didn't see the robot where it had been moments ago either. And then I heard his voice again, but it definitely sounded different. Sounds good. It was coming from the hallway where the robot had been. Pierre, if this is a prank, I swear to God that I'll fire you. No response. I dig a step into the hallway. Pierre, god dang it, you better answer me right now. I'll get you. What the heck? I took a step back into the main room, no longer feeling safe. I went over to the pirate bot and reached for the prop sword, holding it right in front of my body as I moved toward the hallway. The first room on the right was a bathroom, followed by the ticket counter in the hallway to my office. I stood a few meters away from the bathroom and I kicked the door in, keeping the prop sword right at eye level. The door swung open and closed, just as rapidly. Empty. Next was the ticket booth. It had room for an employee to squeeze in and hide behind a sheet, perfect for scaring little kids as they came in. Not so great now that I was apparently hunting a haunted animatronic doll. I stuck the edge of the sword into the curtain and gently pulled it aside trying to see anything. 
It was too dark, so I had to actually physically step into the booth. Nothing. Where was this thing? I cautiously moved down the hallway toward my office, my heart beating out of my chest. There was a silhouette just in the doorway, and I could see its colorless eyes, except they weren't so lifeless anymore. Now they were a bright and sharp blue. I didn't even hesitate. I came toward it, swinging the sword quickly and rapidly as I smashed it back into my office and toward my closet. It spewed out some stinky purple blood as it clawed at my face and I shoved it as hard as I could. As it was pushed backward, I felt its cold, lifeless skin touch mine and thought for sure that it whispered something just as I had crammed it in the closet and slammed the door. Quickly, I slid my desk over and pushed it against the door. I stood back, taking a breath and trying to figure out if I had just gone crazy and attacked a lifeless doll, or if something else entirely had happened. And then on the other side, I heard scratching. Heck no. I pushed the desk as far against the door as I could, and then reached into my pocket and got my storage keys out. Latching it tight, I took a step back to see if it would hold. Thumping. I jumped back a few feet. Nope, time to get out of here. This morning, I've had a chance to compose myself, have a little coffee and jot down as much detail about the incident. I don't know, I guess I could file a police report or something. After I left last night, I told myself it was all the strange a fever dream. I'm walking into the haunt, I heard the soft sound of footsteps and stood still. Pierre, is that you? I shouted out. He popped his head around the corner and waved. Hey boss, you okay? My entire body relaxed and I walked down the hallway. Better now that I've seen you, I said. As I whipped out my phone and decided to unblock John and Pierre, I kept sweeping. You need to come pick this thing up. I messaged as I opened my office door. On the floor, I saw bits of the strange purple blood the thing had spewed out on me scattered across to the closet. The closet that was now open. It got out, I thought. Pierre, did you go in here? I asked, cautiously stepping toward it. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Some guy showed up and said that he was going to take care of whatever was in there. He shouted from the other hall as I creeped the door open. I saw what little was left of the bot, mangled and destroyed. Oh, heck no, that's good enough. I said as I decided to call John. It rang a few times as I paced the room. I've been trying to contact you, he said. Save me the speech and just come get the rest of your stuff, I snapped. I will as soon as you give me your address. John shot back. I clenched the phone harder and froze in place. What? I thought you came by this morning. My eyes darted down the hallway. I didn't see Pierre anywhere. I heard John take a breath. Give me your address now. Then I heard a voice from behind me. Hey, boss. You okay?